Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Fright Night Fridays. Yes, um, Halloween was a bit of a bust this year as far as videos went, and I do apologize for that. You can just thank a bunch of bullshitty things going on in my own personal life that kind of got in the way of the, the video making fun. So, sorry, sorry, guys. Um, but anyway, this is something I kind of had on the back burner for a while anyway. Uh, I thought, why confine all the horror fun to Halloween? and just the month of October and spilling a little bit into November, why not have a regular horror feature? I mean, I watch horror movies all year round, as I'm sure a lot of you do. So, why not? So, as a kind of a nod to the, uh, you know, horror movie hosts of yesteryear, we're calling it Fright Night Fridays. So, every Friday, there will be some kind of horror-related video here. It might be a movie review, might be a collection overview, might be just a closer look at something from my collection. Who knows? We'll see. But it'll be something. It'll be something horror related. So, uh, Lord knows I've got enough stuff to cover video topics for quite some time. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, this past Halloween, one of the things I did was I actually put my entire horror collection on a single shelving unit here. So this is everything. This is the whole DVD and Blu-ray collection right here. And then I got a few of the, you know, the box sets and bigger collections over here. So we're probably going to take a look at those ones last because I'll have to pull them out of the, the display over there to, um, to show you. But uh, for the most part, what we're going to do is go shelf by shelf, one shelf per episode, one shelf per overview, much like I've, how I've done overviews in the past. It's just easier and more organized that way, and we don't have big, long, rambling overviews. I know some, some collectors will do, like, three-hour-long videos of their entire collection. I, I like to keep things a little more easily digestible, shall we say. Um... So yeah, so I moved everything over to a single shelving unit. I didn't realize just how much my horror collection had actually grown over the past couple of years. Because it had been kind of all over the place. I had the Blu-rays over here. DVDs were scattered all over the place. Um, so it's kind of nice to put it all together and actually see just how much stuff I've actually acquired over the past few years. It's quite nice. Um, I mean, it's by no means the biggest horror collection in the world. Far from it. I know there's some people that's all they collect. So their collections are massive, obviously. Uh, but as you know, my tastes are kind of eclectic, so I have a variety of things. Um, so as one who collects a variety of things, I'm quite happy with this collection, to be honest. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here, a lot of old favorites and uh, a lot of blind buys and, you know, special treats and whatnot. So, um, yeah, so just, I guess, to sort of go over it quickly, um, sort of what I consider stuff I put into the horror collection... It's not necessarily strictly horror all the time, but generally it's horror or horror-related things. So, for example, um, you know, Ghostbusters. I put Ghostbusters in the horror section because it's a horror comedy, essentially. I mean, it's more comedy, obviously, but it has horror elements to it, and it's obviously got a lot of nods to the horror genre in it. Um... By similar token, I have a lot of cult films in here. You know, things like Exterminators of the Year 3000 and Damnation Alley. So I kind of lump in cult films with the horror section as well. So you'll see a lot of that too. Um, and there's a few other things. Like there's some thrillers in here that you might consider more thriller than horror. But I don't really have a thriller section in my... Uh, collection. So to me, if it's suspenseful and tense and keeps you on the edge of your seat, it's going into the horror section. You know, so like I would put a lot of Hitchcock movies in here, for example. In fact, I think there are a few. But um, yeah, so that's kind of my, my take on it. Uh, you might see some stuff for kids in there. Well, actually, it won't be on these shelves. I have them in a separate horror for kids section, which maybe we'll do as a little addendum so you can see how that collection has uh, changed over the years. And, um, yeah, some pretty good stuff. Anyway, if you're wondering about the shelves, I should mention, these are the Billy shelves from Ikea. Wonderful shelves. You actually get uh, um, one, two, three, four, five, well, I guess six. Six shelves if you include the bottom. Uh, seven if you also put stuff on the top, as I do. So that's pretty good. And they're nice and wide. You can fit about... I don't know, a lot, a lot of Blu-rays indeed. Well, you can see, I mean, you can fit a ton on each shelf, and that's great. And it's deep enough, you can double row them if you want to. At the moment, I've got VHS tapes in the back, uh, just to kind of put the Blu-rays and the DVDs up to the front. Um, <clears throat> so, s sort of these versus the Walmart ones that I also have a lot of. The Walmart ones are okay, I mean, they're cheap, they're affordable, obviously, they're easy to assemble. 
Um, the, the shelves themselves, the material isn't as sturdy. Like, I've had these for a lot longer than the Walmart shelves, and you notice none of the shelves are Boeing because this is quality Swedish construction right here, folks. Uh, the Walmart stuff, I mean, I've had them for a fraction of the time, and a lot of the shelves are already bowing slightly. Uh, not to mention you get fewer shelves with them. I'm almost tempted to buy another Walmart shelf just to have some extra shelves. You know, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's uh, that, That's my recommendation. I mean, these two here are both Billy shelves, and I've had these for the longest time, and they are definitely a worthwhile investment. Um, okay, so let's get right to it, shall we? We are going to start with shelf number one, which is all DVDs. Yes, we'll get to the Blu-rays, don't worry. But for now, it's all DVDs. All right, so starting from the left, here we go. We have a couple of uh, found footage films I've always really liked. I've done videos about these before. Got The Last Broadcast. See how well you can see that here. There we go. Not hard to see. This, this is a really rare one nowadays. And then the St. Francisville experiment. I'm just going to put these down here so the selections are a little looser. And then we've got Omen 4, which is the only one not available on Blu-ray because it was a TV movie. And then we've got both parts of Riot, which was sent to me a while back by a very generous viewer. This is actually the... Uh, the original miniseries that Kingdom Hospital was based on. This is the, the original version uh, directed by Lars von Trier. Very cool. Then we have, <laughs> from the Asylum, we have Paranormal Entity, which is kind of their mockbuster, as it's called. Uh, obviously trying to cash in on paranormal activity. Um, I actually really like this one. I should do a video about it at some point. Then we got Mystery and Horror Tales, which was sent to me by Jadzia a while back. Um, Volume 1, which has three uh, Asian horror movies on it. What do we got here? Mainichi, Cruel Kidnapping, and Desire to Kill. Yeah, no idea. I've never actually got around to watching them, but uh, I will someday, I swear. We got a couple of, uh, got a few Argento films here. We have, I really need to rebuild my Argento collection. I used to have all of his early stuff up to uh, trauma, I think. Uh, we've got Sleepless. And, oh, speaking of which, we have Trauma. A lot of people don't like this one. I've actually always really enjoyed it. It's uh, properly disturbing. There's some aspects of it that are ridiculous, but uh, but I kind of like it. It's his first American film. And then we've got uh, An Eye for Horror, which is a documentary all about the man himself. I've got that one a couple times over, actually. It's in another uh, set somewhere as well. And then we have Martin. Another really hard to find one nowadays. This is long out of print. Uh, basically a great uh, vampire movie. I did a video about that a while back as well. We've got the Arrow edition of Phenomena. I've also got the Blu-ray version of this, I should mention. And I did a closer look at it a while back. We've got Zombie Planet, which is uh, the first of two movies, actually, that kind of go together. Well, technically a trilogy. Uh, you can't get this particular edition anymore, but there is a uh, collection that has the entire trilogy. Um, I should actually pick that up. This is like super, super low budget. The whole thing's shot on video. Uh, a lot of people hate it. I really enjoyed it, actually, for what it is. I wasn't too harsh of a critic on it. I thought it had a good story. What can I say? Uh, it was a fun little take on the zombie genre. So I will definitely be picking up the uh, the trilogy set at some point. And then, of course, we have a couple of my favorite post-apocalyptic movies ever. we got Threads which is the most disturbing thing you will ever see um, regarding a pos you know, the reality of a nuclear apocalypse. And then the day after, which is kind of like, uh, you know, the American take on the same subject matter. These are both Region 2 DVDs. Uh, Threads has never actually been released over here, so it was sent to me by a viewer a while back. Thank you very much. And then we've got the four-movie Midnight Marathon pack, Psycho. Uh, the Psycho collection, we've got Psycho 2, Psycho 3, Psycho 4, and Bates Motel. Now the main reason I got this was for the last two because these two uh, essentially aren't available any other way. Um, this one's particularly rare. This is not the new Bates Motel which has been on for the past few years. This is the original pilot movie for the original proposed uh, Psycho series. So very rare stuff there. We have The Lost Room which is a uh, mini-series that was sent to me by a viewer a while back. 
And kind of related to that, we have 1408, the two-disc collector's edition version. This includes a couple different cuts of the movie. And we have Bubba Hotep, very nice edition with the, uh, the slip cover here, collector's edition, very cool. Uh, we've got a uh, bucket of blood, which I got from the local Big Lots, uh, which is known as Liquidation World here, uh, before they went out of business. I got this for like 2 or $3, I think. So, kind of cool. Kind of a, a take on the, the beatnik culture at the time. It's apparently quite funny. Uh, Boogie Man, which I did a review of uh, as part of my Halloween 2014 collection of reviews. Uh, a pair of movies here sent to me by a viewer. we got The Haunting of Julia and The Changeling, both of which I also reviewed back in 2014. And we have Black Sheep with special effects by Weta Workshop of Lord of the Rings fame. Basically, zombie killer zombie sheep on uh, in uh, New Zealand. So there you go. The Dark, which is kind of like uh, Silent Hill and even stars Sean Bean. Um, yeah, if you like Silent Hill, I definitely recommend this one. I actually really enjoyed it a lot. And then we got Final Scream, which is basically, you know, a good old teen slasher flick. I have not watched that one yet. Paradise Lost, which is another kind of teen, teens getting killed movie. <laughs> in this case, in the middle of the forest somewhere. Young Warlocks, which uh, I have not watched yet. Ah, here we go. Ringu! Anthology of Terror. This is a very cool set. It contains all four of the original Ringu movies. I don't know how well you can see that, but you got Ringo. Uh, Ringo. <laughs> it's a Ringo Star, the horror epic. Uh, Ringu, Raisin, Ringu 2, and Ringu Zero. So there's uh, actually Ring Raisin and Ringu 2 are both sequels to the original. Ringu Zero is a prequel to the original. So there you go. And we've got uh, The Grudge is the original cut. I'm probably going to trade this one in at some point for the uh, Blu-ray of the unrated version. Uh, then we got Strange D. Snyder's Strangeland. Really, uh, really cool movie using body piercings as torture. Uh, supposedly D. Snyder himself has been wanting to do a sequel for quite a while. And that may or may not be on, in the works now. Blood Rain, the Yuva Bowl classic. <laughs> Unrated director's cut, no less. There we go. It's, uh, I gotta say, that is a pretty nice slipcover, though. This actually includes Blood Rain 2, the video game, with it. Yeah, so you can actually play... Uh, where is it? So, yeah, you got the PC version of Blood Rain 2 on there. It's pretty cool. I actually have the PS2 version through PSN. As you know, I, I really enjoy the games. Um, the movie left a lot to be desired, to say the least. It's good. Whoops, sorry. Good cheesy fun, though. Uh, we've got Stephen King's It, the miniseries that traumatized a generation, and everybody's been terrified of clowns ever since. Reflections of Evil. Who was the guy who did this one again? Damon Packard. Yeah, this is a really cool uh, indie film, actually. Not many people seem to know about it, but uh, very surreal, very trippy, almost Lynch-esque in some ways. Um, I really like this a lot, and uh, i got to do a, a video about it at some point. I'll talk about it a little bit more. And then the, uh, what is the Don Dohler collection here. We've got The Alien Factor from Retro Media Drive-In Theater and Fiend. Great stuff. Love, uh, love this one in particular. It's, it's been a lifelong favorite of mine ever since it scared the shit out of me as a kid. Uh, Halloween Ambience. This is basically a, uh, you know, a Halloween horror... DVD, you know, like those sound effects CDs you get. Yeah, well, this is like a video version of that. You get sound effects and creepy Halloween pictures, like uh, you know, cats and skeletons and pumpkins and witches and stuff like that. It's fun to just kind of throw on in the background. And then we got good old Hell Comes to Frogtown, which uh, apparently does have a super limited edition Blu-ray release, which I would love to get my hands on. This movie is so much freaking fun. Um, I watched it with Skin Slip and uh, some of the other boys from Geeky a while back, and we just had an absolute blast with it. It's it's so much fun. Roddy Roddy Piper stars in that. And then we got the 1990 Bronx Warriors and Escape from the Bronx, both of which are on Blu-ray now, along with the third one, uh, New Barbarians. Uh, so I'm definitely going to pick up the Blu-ray editions of those. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, and this one I think I did a video about a while back, a double feature of Post-Apocalyptia 
We have Panic in Year Zero and The Last Man on Earth, starring Vincent Price. This is the first adaptation of uh, Richard Matheson's I Am Legend. Um, there was, of course, a movie called I Am Legend. And then I think there was another adaptation. I can't remember off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, and even the Asylum got in on it. They did one called I Am Omega. Oh, yeah, I'm an idiot. Uh, there was the Omega Man, <laughs> which I used to have and don't anymore, sadly. I need to get that again. And then we got, uh, what do we got here? Drive-In Classics. We got uh, Return of the Killer Tomatoes and Return to Horror High. So we got a couple of couple of cheesy sequels there. I don't have the first ones of either of those. Um, I've seen the first two uh, Killer Tomatoes movies. You believe they made a kid's cartoon out of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? How does that work? work? I don't know. Anyway, we've got a couple of Troma triple features here. Got Lust and Desire in Vegas. Uh, is this a triple feature or a double feature? Or is this just a single feature? I think this is a single feature. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know why this is in the horror section. I guess because it's Troma, and Troma usually does horror films. So anyway, this is just some some titillation from Troma. Tro Tromalation. Oh, sorry. Bumped the, the thing again. And then three movies, the Nightmare Never Ends collection. We've got The Nightmare Never Ends, Igor and the Lunatics, and Frostbiter, Wrath of the Wendi Wendigo. So there you go. These were uh, gifts from a viewer a while back. Uh, then i got three sort of public domain triple packs here. We've got uh, the Trio of Terror, which includes Nosferatu, Night of the Living Dead, and House on Haunted Hill. I should mention the version of Nosferatu that's on here is the one that has the gothic rock soundtrack. So kind of a cool addition to have, if not the greatest picture quality. Uh, Unspeakable Horror, which has uh, some great silent horror movies. We've got The uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is, is one of my all-time favorite um, silent horror movies. I've got Horror Classics, which has uh, The Satanic Rites of Dracula, which I think just got a Blu-ray release, actually. Uh, horror Express and Jack the Ripper, which is one starring... Uh, that version of Jack the Ripper is starring Klaus Kinski as the Ripper himself. And this is kind of cool. Like As far as public domain collections go, this is actually kind of classy. you got this nice gatefold. It's in a slipcover. Uh, take a look here. We've got another one. I got a little thing. Uh, see, that's a still from the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. That's pretty cool. Got some stuff about Lon Chaney in there. And then here, same thing. We got, uh, oh, and there's there's Max Streck as Nosferatu right there. Very cool. Um, yeah, so actually some pretty, uh, pretty nice uh, little collections there. And here we're getting into, uh, if you're wondering sort of how I organize things, I don't know, it's all over the place right now. Uh, the only part that's sort of organized is I keep kind of the the little indie low budget stuff together and some of the foreign stuff and you know my little Asian horror section and this is all multi movie packs uh, at the end here so we got a bunch from Milk a whole bunch from Mill Creek I think these are all from Mill Creek actually got the four movie collection we have um, oh, we got Agnes of God Mary Riley the Messenger and the Pact of Silence the main reason this is in the horror section is because of Mary Riley which was actually the one main reason I got this collection. Now these are uh, two disc sets that have two movies per disc, so it's actually pretty good as far as uh, you know the Mill Creek stuff. They definitely, it's not like they're public domain collections where they just cram as many as they can on a disc. No, they actually treat these ones quite uh, quite well, all things considered. Four movie collection here. We've got Anatomy and Anatomy Two, which I also have the double feature Blu-ray of. By the way, I kind of doubled up on these. These were review copies that were sent to me a while back, so I didn't actually pay anything for them. So that's kind of cool. And then we got uh, Double Vision and April Fool's Day. One of the reasons I got this was for April Fool's Day, but it's the remake. It's not the original. I really want the original, and then I'll watch the remake. But um, and then here we've got, uh, yeah, I couldn't pass this one up. We've got uh, The Return of the Vampire, The Revenge of Frankenstein, Mr. Sardonicus, and The Brotherhood of Satan. I should mention I also have a double feature Blu-ray that includes Mr. Sardonicus and Brotherhood of Satan. So the main reason I got this one was for Return of the Vampire, which was effectively another van another Dracula movie with Bela Lugosi, just not called Dracula for obvious you know, rights reasons. Then we have the Fright Night 10 movie pack. Fright Night on Fright Night Friday. There you go. Now this one, whoops. Now this one is two discs with five movies per disc. So there's, there's an example. And it actually includes this piece of foam inside to uh, kind of hold things down. So what do we got on here? We have the Ape Man, the the Bat, the Bowery at Midnight, the Devil Bat, the Ghost Walks, 
the island monster, one frightened knight, scared to death, shock, and the white gorilla. So, a bunch of gorilla-oriented stuff there. But uh, some pretty good ones on that selection, actually. And then next up, I've done videos about these before. I'll go over them really quickly. We have um, Freak Show Cinema, which is 12 horror films. These are all uh, fairly recent, uh, low-budget indie ones. We've got Tales of the Dead, Grim Stories of Curses, Horror, and Gore, Zombie Genocide, Legion of the Damned, The Curse of Blanchard Hill, Idol of Evil, Hell is Forever, Below Ground, Demon Holocaust, Order of One, Kung Fu Killing Spree, <coughs> uh, Cold Creepy Feeling, Paranormal Exorcism, Indemnity, Rage of a Jealous Vampire, Glitter Goddess, Queen of the Sunset Strip, Dark Measures, Gang Warfare, By the Devil's Hands, The 666 Killer, and Tuck Bushman and the Legend of Piddle Down Dale. So, there you go. Freak Show Cinema. Very cool. And then we got Taboo Tales. This is uh, this is a really fun collection of, uh, of craziness. This one... Uh, oh, yeah. See, this is when uh, Mill Creek switched to spindles instead. So, it's actually... It's actually three discs stacked on top of each other. Do not like that at all. Hoping that they drop that contract soon. So on this one we've got Reefer Madness, Delinquent Daughters, The Cocaine Fiends, Chained for Life, The Terror of Tiny Town, The Wild and Wicked, Test Tube Babies, Mad Youth, The Marijuana Menace, Sex Madness, Gambling with Souls, and She Shoulda Said No. So there you go. So pretty cool uh, tales of paranoia about drug and sex culture in the early days. And next up we have American Horror Stories. Gee, what did they rip that title off from? Uh, here we have Don't Answer the Phone, which is hilarious, by the way. Unintentionally, of course. Uh, Point of Terror, House on Haunted Hill, A Bucket of Blood. Oh, there's Bucket of Blood again. Horror Express, The Little Shop of Horrors, Nightmare Castle, Silent Night, Bloody Night, Bloody Pit of Horror, the Driller Killer, Don't Look in the Basement, which is also hilariously awful, and Drive-In Massacre. So there you go. That's the American Horror Stories collection from Mill Creek. Next up we have Zombies Unbrained, <laughs> another 12 movie collection. We've got Carnival of Souls, Dead Men Walk, Horror of the Zombies, House of the Living Dead. Most of these are like from the 70s, 40s and 70s, thereabouts. Uh, King of the Zombies, The Last Man on Earth. Oh, you see that one a lot. Uh, plus, it's a really good movie. Uh, Mutant, Night of the Living Dead, of course. Uh, Oasis of the Zombies, The Snake People, Teenage Zombies, and White Zombie. There you go. The, uh, the one that inspired the name of the awesome sort of techno metal band. And then finally, we have Best of the Worst, another 12-movie collection. As you can see, all these 12-movie collections came out around the same time. You can sort of recognize the style of them but uh, really really cool uh, sets actually I really like all the things that are on here we have Manos the Hands of Fate Track of the Moon Beast the Beast of Yucca Flats Ega the Ape Man the Amazing Transparent Man the Atomic Brain Dementia 13 Unknown World the Terror Mesa of Lost Women and the Incredible Petrified World so quite a lot of cool stuff on there and then finally we've got um, this is from Scream Factory, actually. We've got four, uh, or three, four packs. So we got the four-movie sci-fi marathon, which includes Arena, Eliminators, uh, America 3000, and The Time Guardian. I should mention uh, Eliminators is actually getting a Blu-ray release very, very soon. Uh, definitely going to double dip on that one. I've always liked that one. Then we got the four-movie horror marathon, volume one, I think, isn't it? Oh, it doesn't have a volume number on this one, I don't think. Yeah, they didn't number it because they hadn't planned a second one yet. So we on this one we have What's the Matter with Helen, The Vagrant, The Godsend, and The Outing. And some of those have actually got... I think The Godsend and The Outing recently got uh, Blu-ray release as well. Double feature Blu-ray. And then finally we have the four-movie all-night horror, mo horror movie marathon of movies, volume two. We got Dungeon Master, Cellar, Cellar Breller, Cellar Dweller, Contamination Point Seven, and Catacombs. 
Um, Dungeon Master is getting a Blu-ray release. Oh, I guess I'm hitting the camera. Uh, he's getting a Blu-ray release as well. I will absolutely be double dipping on that. I've absolutely love that movie. Absolutely. And I should mention this uh, edition does include the uncut, uncensored cut, uh, which is known as Rage War. Um, so it doesn't have the original title. That's often the case with Scream Factory titles you'll find. Often the most complete versions have alternate titles from what is commonly known. Um, like what they're commonly known by, go figure. So anyway, this edition does include the complete uncut version of the Dungeon Master, which includes the uh, dream sequence at the beginning with that brief bit of full frontal nudity. Um, so you can uh, you can get some boobs. Yeah, gotta love boobs. All right, that is it for shelf one, folks. And there you have it, shelf one of my DVD and Blu-ray horror collection. Now, I should have mentioned this off the top. If you're wondering why I put the DVDs up here and the Blu-rays kind of in the middle and then more DVDs down at the bottom, uh, the simple reason for that is access and visibility. Um, as most of you will know who watch my videos on a regular basis, I usually have my reviewing chair here. Um, so a lot of the times you can't even see the bottom shelf and you also can't see the top shelf just from the angle I use. Uh, you can, however, see these middle three shelves, so obviously I wanted to have sort of the nice collector sets and the Blu-rays all in the most visible place, so there's that reason. Um, it's also a reason of access. Again, when I have the chair here, it's not as easy to reach the bottom shelf. I mostly watch Blu-rays these days, so uh, I like to have easy accessibility to the Blu-rays, and that's pretty much it in a nutshell as to why. I did it that way. As to why I put the DVDs and Blu-rays all together, well, as I said before, I mean, it was simply a matter of wanting to have the entire horror collection in one centralized location to sort of just have everything right there. Alrighty, well, that is it for this edition of the overview. So uh, I will see you next Friday for shelf number two, where we take a look at some pretty cool collector's edition DVDs and the first batch of the Blu-rays. So uh, I'd just like to take a quick moment to thank my Patreon sponsors. Thanks, Patreon sponsors. A special big thanks to my two highest level sponsors, namely Kyle Pellegree and Get Your Gorgeous On, the awesome EMAG run and maintained by Michelle O'Toole and Simon Hedger. Big thanks for the support, guys. Really appreciate it. Please do consider becoming a Patreon sponsor because it just means I can do more stuff like this for you, like, all the time. Alrighty, that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and sayonara. Alright, this time I remembered to record the video.